I'm Rick Claypool. I'm an online organizer in the Congress Watch Division of Public Citizen. Uh, we're a you know, organization in, uh, based in Washington, D.C., a national public interest group. We stand up to corporate power and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with corporate interests in the um, executive, legislative, and judicial branches of the government. Awesome stuff like that. Well, I mean, the, the biggest you know, problem right now, the root of so many of the, uh, the issues that people are facing, whether it's uh, polluting industries, threats to um, healthcare and things like that. You know, so many, all these things are, are being funded by corporate interests. And uh, that's been uh, you know, expanded to an incredible extent because of the recent uh, Citizens United decision, uh, you know, which is allows, basically allows corporations to spend unlimited amounts of money to influence elections. It means corporate money drowns out the voices of real people in elections and totally, you know, completely distorts uh, our democracy. So a lot that people can be doing about it. The, the major thing, the thing that is the only thing that's really equal to the task of uh, of undoing the Citizens United decision is a constitutional amendment to uh, to reverse the decision, to undo the damage, you know, things from campaign finance reform, public funding of elections, disclosure of, uh, of who's, uh, who's funding ad campaigns, things like that, and um, uh, shareholder protection. Corporations, whenever they're spending to influence elections, they're they're actually they're using other people's money. They're using the shareholders' money. Uh, during the uh, August recess, we're going to be encouraging folks to. Um, to get out there and to talk to their members of Congress and to say, you know, will you take a stand against, you know, corporate influence in elections? Will you support a constitutional amendment? It's a thing that really should cut across the, um, the political divide. I mean, I think that the polling is uh, is something. It's something like. 80% of, of people agree that corporations have too much influence in our government. It should be actual real people who are, you know, are influencing our government and making it work for them, not corporations. Other things we'd be working, we'd be working on are, um, you know, in the Congress Watch Division are uh, you know, financial regulatory reform and uh, access to justice issues. So um, everybody knows the big Wall Street reform bill uh, passed last year. What a lot of people don't realize is that that was just part of the work that needed to be done. Right now, there, there are all kinds of efforts to you know, kill one of the most important uh, things that came out of that bill, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, created by uh, Elizabeth Warren. Uh, we think she would be uh, the ideal uh, director of the, uh, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And there has been just a you know, resounding resistance being fueled by uh, you know, members of Congress who are getting a lot of money from the uh, Wall Street and the banks uh, to uh, to oppose her and to oppose the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Period. There's a representative from, uh, from North Carolina just a couple of weeks ago. He held this you know, ridiculous hearing, uh, sort of you know, accusing of Elizabeth Warren of all these things of being a, a unaccountable dictator and um, you know I mean the guys top campaign contributor as Wells Fargo there's you know little nitty-gritty pieces like um, there was a, a piece of the bill that was um, you know being the regulators were seeking comments on you know they, they were talking about the SEC the FDIC the Fed you know they're implementing these rules from the uh, from the Wall Street reform bill they sought public comment on how best to implement uh, these rules one of them was a rule about how Wall Street pays itself, right? Because right now, they, you know, the way the pay structures are set up, they can actually um, incentivize the you know, outrageous sort of risk-taking that put us into the crisis in the first place. Clearly, that's something that needs to be fixed. So uh, we mobilized, you know, uh, more than 8,000 you know, activists to share their personal stories about how this recession is affecting them uh, in their communities. And you hear these, there's these heartbreaking stories. It goes from folks who are um, who are retired who suddenly have to take you know part-time jobs to folks who are just you know getting out of uh, school, graduating with honors, and there are there's nothing for them. You know, so many working people who just lost their jobs and now there's not anything for them uh, and we took those stories and enabled people to send them to the, uh, the financial regulators so that they can have that on their mind as they're making the decision about how how tough they want to be on uh, you know, Wall Street's practices and how they pay themselves especially you know, the way they pay themselves that actually uh, damages the real economy hopefully having 
those kinds of stories you know, on their minds will make them aware that it's not just uh, Wall Street lobbyists and you know, sort of uh, you know, economic you know, experts um, who are uh, who's they, who they're affecting, right? This is actually stuff that affects real people everywhere.